Hi and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one we're taking a look at something that is quite useful and quite easy to set up, and that is personal workspaces in Orchestrator. So let's get to it. So of course the first question is what is a personal workspace? Well it's a workspace that is personal. It belongs to one person and to that person only. And what that does for that person is it allows him or her to sort of be the king of his castle inside of that workspace. He can play around with assets or resources in any way he wants to, and it's not going to affect anyone else's assets in any other folders. So if we look at this orchestrator here, and please note this is in incognito mode, so it has the black bar here at the top, and this is the orchestrator in which I'm logged in as a user. And that user right now has normal orchestrator access, so he can see folders A and B and whatever is inside of those. And on this tenant, the personal workspaces feature has been enabled. So he can also see his personal workspace. Now if we go to another orchestrator where I'm logged in as an admin, we can see here that on the tenant level, if we go to settings, we can see that the personal workspace feature has been enabled on this tenant. That means that users will see their own personal workspace when they log into Orchestrator. But there's another option, and you can further limit what the user can see instead of having to set the permissions and things like that in very fine detail for all users. What you can do when you create the user or after you have created the user is if you go in to edit this user, and we'll use this user called Yebe. If we edit that user and say that his default UI profile is the personal workspace, and update that user. If we then switch to the other orchestrator we had before, and we'll just do a refresh here, we can see that the bar on the left here where he could pick between folder A and folder B and his personal workspace, that has disappeared now. There's no tenant level for him to play around in anymore. All he has is the folder called his personal workspace. So in that workspace, he has the resources or some of the resources that he would have in a normal folder and orchestrator. He has his automations folder, he has a queues folder, an assets folder, and a storage buckets folder, and he also has alerts, but that's not really a resource. So automations, queues, assets, and storage buckets are available for the user to use. So what does that mean when we're developing? Well, if I open Studio now, and start a new project, What we can see down here at the bottom right is that this user has three options as to what folder does he want to be connected to, either folder A and folder B, to which he does have permissions, because that's defined inside of this orchestrator, that if we at the tenant level go into that folder, we can see that at folder A, in this case, that user does have permissions. So he will see that folder inside of Studio. If we removed the user from this folder, and we can do that here and go back to Studio. And we will have to refresh this. We can see that folder A should now disappear. So he doesn't have the option of being connected to that folder. And being connected to that folder inside of Studio means that he would be able to see the resources of that folder. So now let's say that we want to be connected to our personal workspace folder here. That means that all of the resources that are in my personal workspace I can see and use from inside Studio. Right now I shouldn't have any resources because there's nothing in my orchestrator inside of my personal workspace. But if we pin this inside Studio and then go back to our orchestrator and say we just want to create an asset real quick. And we'll just create an asset called language. And then we'll put in English and click Create. So now we have an asset. And if I go back to Studio and refresh my assets or resources, we should see an asset pop up in here. And that's our language asset. And if I open my main workflow here and drag in the language asset, it'll actually offer me to use the, for example, get asset activity. And then it would get that asset called language and we could place it into a variable called language in here. So being isolated inside my own personal workspace means that I can play around with all the stuff that I want when developing my automation. And that's really 
the whole idea of the personal workspace is that you isolate the user from the world around you and you also isolate the world around you from a user. So let's just uh, say that we really love this automation right here. We're going to write a message box. And in that message box, we'll just put language is and then we'll add the value from the language variable. So if we run this, we should see a message box saying language is English and we do. So we think this is a really ingenious automation. We're going to publish it. And again, we can here set the normal publishing options as you usually do. And you can see here that the personal workspace feed is selected as the default. You are still able to publish to, uh, for example, a folder on your machine, or you can also publish to the tenant. But uh, by default, it's set to the personal workspace feed because your workspace has its own package feed. And what happens when you publish it is, and we'll see that in just a second, it is successful. And if we switch to that workspace and go into the automations, we can see here that now we are in the processes tab. And there's already a process created here. That is not the case if we publish to the tenant feed. Then there's only a package being uploaded, and then we have to manually create the process. But that's not the case inside the personal workspace. As soon as you publish something, it is published both as a package. You can see that over here in my packages that we have the blank package, but we also have a process called blank. And that's a process that is now runnable. So if I now open my assistant, we see here that we have this uh, blank process that we can run. And it runs and we have language is English. So this is really all there is to these personal workspaces. It's a workspace that is yours and yours alone, where you can publish stuff to. And when you publish, you don't have to create the process. All you have to do is you publish the package and the process is automatically created. Now, if we go back into the other orchestrator, what we can do is we can go to the tenant level and into the folder section. And what we can do instead of just watching the folders or looking at the folders here, we can look at the personal workspaces. And if we go down to my personal workspace here, what we can do is if we click the start exploring uh, menu item here, what we'll see over on the menu on the left is that this personal workspace is now added to the folder tree over here. So now we can browse all of the stuff that's inside this personal workspace as if we were the user who owned that personal workspace. Uh, and of course, if we go back to the tenant level, go into the folders and select the personal workspace and click stop exploring, then that will be removed again. But while we are exploring it, we can do all of the usual stuff as far as looking at the automations. We can look into the packages and see what is this automation actually doing, just like we know it from a normal orchestrator folder. So I'll just quickly remove it again or stop exploring it again. And there's another option in here now. And that is when we have deployed our process to this folder and we think we really want other users to have access to this automation, what we can do is we can click the workspace over here and we can convert it to a modern folder. And what will happen if we do that is that everything that is inside my personal workspace will be converted to a modern folder and we'll just call it Give us amazing automation. And once we, we convert it here, we can see if we refresh the page that over here on the left, we now have a modern folder called Yebis Amazing Automation. And that is the full folder with everything that was in it when it was a personal workspace. Now, if we go back to the other orchestrator where I'm logged in as a user who owns the workspace, what we'll see is if we refresh the page, is that everything is gone from here. So whatever we had inside the folder has now been moved to the modern folder and our personal workspace is gone and has been replaced by a blank personal workspace that we can start over with new resources, new automations, new everything. So, so that's just a way that you can go from having a personal workspace that is good for you to converting it to a modern folder that is good for more people than just yourself. So I hope this gave you a little bit of an impression of what a personal workspace can do for you. If you are in an organization where you don't have access to Orchestrator, although you are a developer, you know, maybe you have to submit a request to have assets created, queues created and things like that. Talk to your admin and see if you can get access to a personal workspace, because then you can do all of those things yourself without any risk to the environment as a whole. 
So definitely a good option if you want to explore a little bit of the options that you have inside of Orchestrator without getting full-blown access. So if you like the video, give it a like. If you like my videos in general, subscribe to my channel. I try to put out about two or three new videos every week uh, when I have time. So hopefully you'll come back for more. But for now, that's it. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.